Well, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, so Carbon Sink is a carbon farming project developer. Um, we work in cropping and grazing systems in the entirety of the Southwest Land Division from Geraldton to Esperance and right down into the corner. Um, and what we essentially do is support farmers to enhance the health of their farm ecosystem. And the uh, way that we measure that is by measuring the amount of carbon that's in the soil. Um, and, that, and when we're increasing carbon in the soil, we're creating carbon credits. Um, so uh, the, what I'm going to talk today about is um, mainly insetting um, and its relation to offsetting. Um, so insetting and offsetting are very hot topics in agriculture because there is a degree of competition or perceived competition between these, these two activities. Um, but I'll essentially share with you what it's all about in agriculture. So, okay, so just, just to go back to, you know, what it is that Carbon Sink is really trying to achieve. Um, so we want to position agriculture as a solution to climate change, biodiversity loss and improved human and animal health. Um, we plan to do this um, by demonstrating uh, through ecosystem monitoring, collection of high integrity environmental and economic data that agriculture can be managed to restore the health of ecosystems, that farmers are stewards of the land whose work provides benefits beyond the farm gate, and that the market and broader community values this benefit and that um, rural communities are wonderful places to live and work. So we've got insetting and offsetting. So um, I'm going to start with offsetting. Offsetting is fairly well understood. Um, so offsetting is when uh, carbon removals or emissions reductions or avoidance outside of the company's value chain. So Carbon Sink has been funded by Chevron. Um, Chevron is Australia's largest industrial emitter. It has a, a very large um, carbon liability. Um, and as uh, the aluminium industry has a similar challenge, it's very hard for them to decarbonise um, their industry. So um, one of the ways that um, they can compensate for the pollution is to get somebody else to remove that pollution, and that's what we do. So that's an example of offsetting. Now, insetting is quite different. So insetting occurs when you uh, make a, an emissions, uh, you reduce emissions inside a company's value chain. Uh, and this is something that, that's a, a very big uh, thing in agriculture. So I'll show you an example of that. All right. Oh, hang on, did I miss that slide? Okay. Okay, so here is an example of an insetting program. Now, in agriculture, insetting is often sponsored by the off-taker of the commodity. So, for example, we might have um, wheat. Uh, so, Kellogg's is a huge purchaser of wheat in Australia. Um, and Kellogg's works within its supply chain, so it works with the farmers to support the farmers to reduce their emissions. Um, the Cool Soil Initiative is, is an Australian um, collaboration between uh, a, a big group of um, off-takers, purchasers of agricultural commodities, mainly grains and oil seeds. Uh, so do people understand the different scopes in um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions? Okay, I'll just quickly go over it. So we talk about scopes. So we have <coughs> scope one, scope two and scope three. So scope one emissions are generally those emissions that you have control over in your business. In this example, Kellogg's producing the box of Just Right would be in control of processing and packaging. Um, it's unlikely that Kellogg's would also be in control of transportation. Um, and Kellogg's is most definitely does does not have control of, of, of agriculture. So scope one for Kellogg's is processing packaging. Scope two is um, purchased electricity. So that's really simple. That's the same across the board. And then you have scope three, right? So scope three can happen upstream and downstream. So in this situation, just right, the, um, the downstream um, scope three emissions are those that are generated through agricultural production. And the upstream scope three emissions are the transportation of the box of just right towards. Yeah? So this is quite interesting. Um, this 
740 gram box of just right is responsible for 2,590 grams of CO2e. CO2 e. um, and of that 2,590 grams of CO2e, nearly 70% of that comes from activities that sit inside the farm gate. So for a company like Kellogg's, which is a, um, a, a multinational company, I believe, uh, you know, they have requirements for emissions reductions that are imposed um, at, you know, another jurisdiction, another company's level. Um, due to the size of their company, they, they, they have investor pressure, shareholder pressure. Um, and so when a company like Kellogg's puts out an emissions reduction um, target or strategy, um, they actually have to have a pathway towards achieving that. Um, they can't just say that they're going to do that and, and, and completely miss the target and actually not lift a, lift a finger and do nothing at all because the, the, the consequences for them, for, for them could, can be quite serious. So somehow they have to influence the activities of the farmers, um, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do. <laughs> all right. So that's a, your scope three emissions um, scenario. So let's have a look at what this 68% of emissions is made up of. So we talk about scope one, scope two and scope three. So now I'm talking about the scopes of emissions um, that, are, that the farmer is responsible for. So in this situation, you've got scope one being the fuel that they use. So they have control of the fuel usage. They're using their tractors. They're making decisions as to how they use them. Um, is this the Anyway, um, uh, applications of lime, fertiliser, um, burning of stubbles if they still continue to do that, um, the breakdown of uh, crop residue and um, atmospheric deposition from various activities. Now you'll see here that electricity con consumption here is a very small, it's only 0.41%. And then we have <coughs> scope three emissions for the farmer. So scope three emissions here are in relation to the production of the fertiliser and the pesticides and the transportation of the fertiliser and the pesticides um, um, to the farm. So when we look at this, if we were to say, okay, what, 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 what do we have some kind of influence over? So we, have, we may have influence over the use of lime, uh, fertiliser, we can choose not to burn. So here we have, let's say 30%, 13%, so that's 43%. Now if we... Um, if we if we cut the if we cut let's say we cut some, the fertilizer in half, then over here we've got another fourteen percent, so that's fifty percent. You know, in agricultural inputs alone, we've got seventy percent of the actual um, greenhouse gas emissions profile behind the gate. Um, so that's that's very significant. So how do we how do we influence that? So. Some of the activities that a farmer could undertake to reduce their emissions is to improve the health of their soil, um, reducing the requ requirements for fertilisers, pesticides and herbicides. They could integrate more diversity into the cropping system, um, implement practices like cover cropping, intercropping, pasture cropping. Uh, they could shift from synthetic to non-synthetic forms of fertilisers, for example using um, bio biochar, rock dust, biological pest control, compost pellets. Um, and they could use technology like virtual fencing to enhance livestock producti productivity. So there are a huge amount of things that farmers can do. Um, but in agriculture, change is slow <laughs> and things need to be proven and farmers need to um, touch, feel and see uh, other farmers being successful and preferably other farmers in their own, uh, in, within 100 kilometres of themselves um, for them to, to uh, want to embrace uh, these kinds of changes. So while you have technical problems here in terms of uh, uh, decarbonisation, I'd say the primary challenge that we have in agricultural agriculture are social and cultural challenges. So, what is what does this what relationship does this have to carbon sink? So, you can't store carbon in soil by by managing agricultural land from an industrial par paradigm. 
you need to shift to more of an ecological, eco-agrological approach to agricultural management, which are many of the practices that were mentioned on the previous slide. Um, and so by default, when farmers work with us, they not only remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, they, um, they also reduce their emissions. Um, and that's the end. Thank you.